Oh, we got a great show for you today. A lot of suspense built into this episode as we await the waivers to go through on Elijah Mitchell. We have some buy sell on the show, some mailbag, the Thursday night preview. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you click like, subscribe, and enjoy. Foot Clan, we know what you want. It's football and not just a game or two. You want all of them. You want them live, but unfortunately, some of you can't get DirecTV Aww. where you live. Well, not a problem because you can stream 2021 NFL Sunday ticket on your favorite devices. No satellite required. It's like having front row seats to every live out-of-market game. Not only that, but the NFL stream comes with shortcuts. You could see replays of the games in less than 30 minutes. This is what I've been using to rewatch the games. It is awesome. They have a player tracker. Follow up to 20 of your favorite players. Go online to NFLSundayTicket.com slash Sunday Ready now to see if you're eligible. Pro tip, use the promo code BALLERS2021 at checkout and save 15%. Again, to see if you're eligible for the NFL Sunday Ticket streaming package, go to NFLSundayTicket.com slash Sunday Ready and use code BALLERS2021 to save 15% when you sign up. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, September 15th, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you. Just waiting on some waivers. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, we're getting remind right me. in, are we? Well, I, for, I was going to ask if Mike had recovered from... Oh, I'm back. You're I'm, back? I'm back, baby. Just ready for waivers? I feel like... Listen, tell me how much I need to spend. You guys are in my league. Tell me how much I need I to spend. I just clicked it up a, a couple more. No, you oh, did Oh, come on, Michael. Um, he knows I, he can drain my fab yeah. right here, <laughs> right now. I want, I want it to go through, and, and you, you get them for some outrageous price, and then you go and look at the waiver. And Mike's at like $11. We're, all, we're talking about Elijah Mitchell, yes. by the way. Look, I, I don't know if you guys know this about me. Oop, clicked it up. Oh, stop it. <laughs> But I got to go change my. Hold on, uh, I was actually pretty in on Raheem Mostert. I don't know if you guys knew that. I, I heard. Um, I heard. Uh, now, <laughs> now out for the year. <sighs> which this was. This was a player that um, spent most of his time on social media defending himself against an injury-prone label in the last offseason. Right. Ooh, I, I've got more muscles. Takes exposed. I've got more muscles now. Uh, and you had the what the spouse or girlfriend coming out and saying like you guys make a big deal yeah. about everything. He's fine. Two plays, really? It's sad. And I know that I don't control it, but man, it would have been nice if he had played more than two plays. Because he like he was going to be really good. Yes, Mike. He was going to be really like Elijah Mitchell was. You think? Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Just got more expensive. Just click the button one more time. I, I honestly don't know. I have been, I have never before. Like my team, my roster, the way it shakes, and we're in a keeper league, and the way it shakes out, and we've got a lot to talk about on today's show. We got buy sell. We got mailbag. We'll get to it. This is far more important. Um, I've never gone back and forth on a number more than I've done with a lot of your waiver Mitchell. claim. Yeah, because. This is very, I mean, it's, it's contextual, right? It's like, if your team is desperate, it's week two. If, yes. if there, what percentage chance is he, you know, the guy? It, it's not 100%. No. Like, it could be Trey Sermon, Kyle Shanahan, or like, what are the odds? Sunday rolls around. Jermichael Hasty of course. is the starting running back for the team. That could happen. Jermichael Hasty is actually what scares me in the sense I, I I went back, looked at the snap percentages, the 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 game flow theory, and basically what was happening was it was a it, it was Elijah Mitchell as a first and second down back, and Jermichael Hasty as the third down back. That's what was going on. So it's one of those where yeah, but that's most Mostert was the first right, second down back. But if Trey Sermon overtakes Elijah Mitchell, yeah, there is no guarantee it's, that it's Trey Sermon and Elijah Mitchell. It could be Trey Sermon and Jamichael Hasty in the third down role. Are you taking your bid down now, Mike, after that? 
Nope, I just went up. Oh. Look, uh, yes. Where do you want? What, yeah, come on. I mean, he set you up perfect yeah, over there, I'll, producers. Yeah. I, I put a pause. And the- it's okay. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, uh, thanks. It's- better late than never. Better, <laughs> better late. When is week two? Like, last year, if you could go back in time, there were players that you would have spent more on in week two if you knew how their season was going to. And James, like James Robinson, Robinson would have been worth all of your fab. And Oh, uh, great. All of my fab. Like I, <laughs> and I, I know I'm supposed to be giving advice, but I need it now. I on, it, Elijah Mitchell is so difficult because I honestly believe that you have to take the shot. You have to go get him. And I've seen tons of people on Twitter. Like, I went a full Hagar, and I got him, and I barely got him because I went with the – <laughs> I went with the full 55, and then you've – but we talk about you got to know your league. Someone's like, I went the full Hagar. I f- found out I wasted 30, 30 of my fab bucks well, because I, it was the highest bid by 30. And like you, It's so hard to gauge. There's a way to do it. I figured it out. You got the algo? Yeah, I have the algo figured out. You should have led with this. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I think about the number and then decide if you'd be mad if you were beat at that number. Yes. I mean, really. Yeah, that's it, the way to do it. it. I had a number yesterday. I was talking with my co-manager. He's like, yeah, we should probably go here. We'll probably get him. And then we're like, yeah, but what if somebody else gets him and you went that number? Like, it doesn't mm. really matter if you overpaid. You just need to be content with the fact you get it. And, and it's all about desperation. I looked around the league. I'm the most desperate team for a running back. Yes. Therefore... Like, my season could fall apart without another running back. And I think that's the perfect way to lay it out. Like, we get asked all the time what should i go what do i blind bid on this and uh, how do i get this player on my roster the the answer is what's the number you will be you'll be okay if i put that number in and i don't get him yep 100 percent. so that's that's fantastic and we have some questions today just talking about strategy with the waiver wire and whether you you know you put conditional bids in to release a player whether you drop players ahead of time you know, every platform works a little bit differently on how it functions if you're in a fab bidding system. Um, I, if I'm being honest, I don't think any of them work the way they should quite yet. I, I think you need to give people the ability to make smart waiver claims. We need a flow chart. We, we do. You should be able to build out an if this, then that yes. type of chart where, you know, you could put in bids on the same player at different prices. Yes. Which is a problem. But we'll get into that. But since we figured that out i have a new number guys oh let's it's, hear it. it's just went up oh <laughs> but you're not going to reveal it oh no because that would be so much more helpful for me um it will be revealed in about 22 <laughs> minutes how how in the world would, i mean you have mark ingram you don't need running backs oh i've got the king of texas yeah <laughs> the king of texas um twitter at the ff ballers the community i invite you go over there join the foot.com get in now this is the beginning of the season. You got 17 more weeks of the regular season plus playoffs. This is a community of, of, of listeners that are uh, incredible human beings. You get a bonus episode every week. You get access to all the premium tools. Check that out right now. And uh, a reminder, you know, it's Wednesday. Oh, yeah. So we have our weekly show on Spotify Green Room this afternoon. If you don't know what Green Room is, it's a new live audio app from Spotify. We're doing a live show every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, all season long. Just download the Spotify Green Room app, follow Fantasy Footballers, and you'll be notified when we're live. And when you get that notification, jump in. Jump in to secure your spot in the yeah, room. Yeah, the, the rooms are limited. Yes. Occupancy. Um, and so hop in quickly. Yep. And you can submit questions. And, and we have a – it's a little more loose, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, because we're still button up right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, into buy, sell we go. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. I know Mike's bid is like $7. <laughs> and um, All will be revealed. Well, I guess it, it was. Yeah, mm, it just, but. just went up. Uh, Raheem, last, last week, you guys got two out of three right on the buy sell. I had one right. Um, and in, you, you know it, what? It's kind of unfortunate because it was Logan Thomas' five receptions. He had three and a big touchdown, but hey, yeah, you guys he got came it. Through through, he came through for fantasy. Uh, we didn't really hit on this because he was a tight end seven, three for 30 with a touchdown. But, Andy, let me get your your take on this. Three targets, that was it for Logan Thomas and Curtis Samuel, who was kind of 
He was the player that we were concerned about coming in and siphoning targets away from Logan Thomas. But this Curtis is, Samuel wasn't there, and Logan still only had three targets. This is offense. I mean, the offense is not going to be great. Ryan Fitzpatrick, he had a different floor than Taylor Heineke has. There's a trust to throw the football in situations. You will hand the ball off to Antonio Gibson now. So, yeah, if I had Logan Thomas, there's a chance I'm looking to upgrade. But, you you know, there's only a handful of those guys you can do that with. You're not getting Darren Waller after week one. You're not getting Travis Kelsey. Correct. Yeah, so, I, I would be looking for maybe a Dallas Goddard. Oh, I see. you staring down <laughs> someone after a trade offer. I, I think Logan Thomas is actually going to be fine. I realize there's only three targets, but the team did not throw the ball a lot. They were winning the game, and with the backup quarterback coming in, I, I think that they will – throw more going forward now that they okay. can practice with Heineke. I mean, I don't know if you know this, Andy. Do you know who led the team in targets? Uh, I do not. Antonio Gibson with five. Yeah. So there were there were not a lot of not, targets I mean, to go around. You could definitely hope, but there is no <laughs> – that is also a bad thing, right? To have to hope. Yeah, I mean, it's a bad thing to have to tell me that Antonio Gibson led the team in targets. Oh, if sure, you, yeah. If you have Logan Thomas, Terry McLaurin – Not if Gibson's on your team. <laughs> That wasn't a pro Gibson thing. He wasn't, that, I mean, that, he was barely in double digits, Antonio Gibson, despite touching the ball three times a play. Yeah, I was not making a pro Gibson statement there. I was making an anti-Washington football team throwing the ball. Yeah. That was the leader in targets on the team. Um, so they just didn't throw the ball a lot. Yeah, they, they all have good games, but you might have some real stinkers with Heineke at quarterback. Buy or sell, week two. We'll call this the bounce back edition. Aaron Rodgers at Detroit. Three passing touchdowns, buy or sell. Give me the, uh, the the team that he's playing again. The Detroit Football Lions. I will buy this immediately. Mm -hmm. Thank I, you. I feel like this is a price just went up situation. <laughs> I will buy. <laughs> oh, man. There it is. Oh, God. Oh, slow yeah. on the uptake back Three there. passing. It's not three or more. It's three. Oh, so if he hits three, I lose if I sell him. Yeah, I, I'll sell. Okay. So I you think say, two? Yeah, I think two. I think two, and we get some running game in this one. Uh, Detroit's secondary is just so bad. Uh, and Calvin, the, and the, the numbers on Aaron Rodgers, by the way, uh, when he has a stinker like he had in week one, which was historically one of the worst games that Aaron Rodgers has put up, uh, statistically speaking, he bounces back in a big way after those games. And this is the perfect, perfect matchup. Calvin Ridley at Tampa Bay, 100 receiving yards. He did not have a big week one, right? Um, 100-plus yards in eight games last year, including against Tampa Bay. I think we all imagine the Falcons will be trailing in this game. Do you think Calvin gets to 100? Calvin started the game pretty well, uh, but the offense for the Falcons really fell apart in the second half. Part of that was their offensive line and their snap penalties. I think that the defensive line Tampa Bay is going to give them trouble. I'm going to sell. I don't think that the Falcons offense is fixed by going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'll buy it. Last week you had, uh, you know, huge games from Cooper, C.D. Lamb. Uh, you had, you're going to have to come back in this one, and I think Calvin Ridley will have no problem. Yeah. Tampa Bay secondary got banged up last week too. It's tough. This is one of the, ga the games that I want to go back and watch today of how to, you know, seeing it on Sunday, but you're still trying to absorb all the games. But I want to hone in on how did Matt Ryan really look. 100 yards is a lot. And, yes, the Dallas wide receivers got it done, but Dak is excellent. Dak is one of the best quarterbacks in the league right now. Is is there a Matt Ryan problem, or is it the play calling? I'm going to sell the 100-yard mark because that's just too too high against Tampa. Allen Robinson at Cincinnati, or versus Cincinnati, top 12 wide receiver week in a half PPR league. What do you think about Allen Robinson having a bounce back week in week two? Ooh, that's it's really <laughs> tough because I, I do think Allen Robinson by the end of the year finishes as a top 12 wide receiver. Um, but his method of finishing as a top 12 is not necessarily to often be in the top 12 on a weekly basis. It's just to be very consistent, you know, rarely outside of the top 24. I do think he has a bounce back game. So this is one where it's like I want to be in on Allen Robinson. I'm saying I'm pro him this week, but – Top 12 is too high a line. I'm going to sell, and I'm going to regret it next week. Yeah, it's really close. Last week, he had 11 targets. He just ended up with 35 yards on 11 targets. That is not a great audition for Andy Dalton. Um, you know, Allen Robinson gets to 
come off the field shaking his head again, which is like the permanent condition for him in the NFL. So if this game goes south somehow, right, like Cincinnati was better than we expected last week. Yeah, if their this, defense was surprising. This is the turning point if – if Dalton can't succeed against Cincinnati this week, just Fields time. Justin Fields is going to be on the field yeah, a lot I, more. I don't disagree with that. You, we should be on Fields alert, which, I mean, that's an excellent point that we're early on in the week. If you have that extra bench spot and Justin Fields is out there, I think this is a good week to stash him. Top 12, I got to sell that as well. I have, I have Robinson just fringe right in that area right now, so I would take the under. All right, that was Buy or Sell from PristineAuction.com. Pristine Auction, use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit on some sweet sports memorabilia. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Uh, well, Raheem Mostert was, uh, he was on the eight-week timeline. He is now on the all-week timeline. Mm. Season-ending. He's year-to-year. Knee surgery. <laughs> uh, but good news, Jason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're back. Carry on Johnson signed to the practice squad for the ever-revolving door of 49ers running backs. If you want confidence in the current roster of running backs that they had, this should give you confidence. Sure. I mean, it, carry on Johnson at this point with those knees are not – he's not coming in and stealing the show. Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll said Rashad Penny is going to miss week two. Calf injury is probably going to miss more than week two. A lot of rumors that he might go on the IR. Even, oh after, even after waivers clear, Alex Collins is a name you should be aware of. He was inactive for week one, um, but he would be in that role. We saw it last year, so I think Alex Collins is active and is the backup to Chris Carson. And for what it's worth, I mean, it's preseason, but Alex Collins actually looked like the best running back in the room. He's good. Uh, in the preseason so dynasty waivers uh, he might be out there in some sure. leagues hey ronald jones out of the doghouse gonna start this week thoughts <laughs> that's sure wink yeah <laughs> that normally i want my source to be the head coach who comes out and says these things which it was yeah but this particular coach is bruce arians uh bruce the almighty liar arians there is a buy low opportunity for Ronald Jones. Bruce, the almighty <laughs> liar. I I tried it out. It was it? great. Okay, thank you. I do think you could buy Ronald Jones on the cheap right now. I you made certainly a, could. I made a very very affordable uh, trade offer. I tried to trade Jalen Rager off of his good week to an Eagles fan for Rojo. Um, he's a running back that has a path towards being successful, even if you're not going to play him this week. And I would not play him on this what, news. What a pathetic offer from you. I, I would never do something like that. I, I offered Dallas Goddard in exchange for Ronald Jones. <laughs> to the Eagles. To the yeah. same manager. Uh, <laughs> uh, we do have some COVID news. Hooray. Five Saints assistant coaches, one player. Michael Thomas was already on IR, but he's now on the COVID IR. So, Ooh, double IR. <laughs> Did that take you off the IR? Is, this uh, like yeah, a, is it a double negative? Multiplication situation? I don't know. Um. But no, that so far not going to impact the game this week from what we understand. The early rumors was that it might, that you could have. I mean, we know that the protocols in the NFL this year, if you have a breakout on your team, you could have a forfeit on Sunday. The the uh, count for no points for the other team. But the coaches uh, were vaccinated so that they can be. The protocol. The protocols, they can be back quicker should they get through, get through this uh, the illness. Brooksy, we got any other news? No other news. Not no yet. other news. Nothing breaking. That's good. Uh, the 2021 season, one weekend. Grab the Sleeper app. News and notes brought to you by Sleeper. They have breaking news channel. You can get in there and you can, uh, well, be up to date a little bit earlier than your league mates. Shall we hop into the mailbag, dear friends? Let's Shall open it up. Mailbag. Mailbag. So you're talking about like a really big mailbag because we just hopped into it. We like fit. a Santa we do, we sack fit. situation. We, we don't all fit together, but we do fit into One at a time? Yeah. It's snug for me. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I've always viewed the mailbag as a Santa sack style. Have you? Yeah, always. And then do you open the letters from within it and then read them from there? I usually just reach in. 
but Wait, but, but he wanted to jump in. Well, yeah, yeah he, then you would open if you're already oh, so in. It's you're going to read it. Santa sack style, but you're not inside of it. Not usually. Okay, <laughs> not usually. <laughs> Because you visualize it every time. That's right. Uh, right. If you have a question for the show, you can head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. You can also dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. First question comes from Andy in Phoenix. Uh, Mike, <laughs> how much are you spending on Elijah Mitchell this week? Currently, <laughs> currently my waiver claim is sitting at somewhere between 0 and $100. Mm. All right. Now I know where I can... <laughs> position my strategy thank I, you i'm glad to narrow that range down for you all right let's hop into a voicemail question hey ballers this is terry t out of phoenix why don't you call david montgomery david opportunity anymore haven't heard that in a while I feel like we should bring that back thanks so david opportunity <laughs> is one of our worst <laughs> I, I i liked it what happened in the, the genesis of this was um he was kind of a little bit meh gummery uh, the reality was he had so much work ahead of him and the the opportunity to touch the ball really turned him into David Mopportunity. And the and the reality is he still has giant Mopportunity. <laughs> but I feel like that's a little bit insulting to the player he's become because the reason sure. he was David Mopportunity yes. was because he, he was 100% opportunity, not talent. Now I feel like his talent has caught up. He's looking great out there. Svelte, break of tackles. But I do like the nickname, so he, should we? We need to make an official ruling here as to whether we go back to the well on my opportunity. I don't think so. I think I'm with you on that. On that, and you know, sometimes nicknames that good just run their course. But I don't and know. Sometimes nickname that bad run their course. Yeah, I mean, 17 opportunities in week one. Oh my gosh! Uh, all right, let's jump into another voicemail question here. Hey, ballers! This is Zach in Missouri. Big fan. Quick question, and a full PPR, which starts Saquon Barkley or Elijah Mitchell oh, this man. week versus the Eagles. Thanks. Oh. Love the show. Bye. Oh, so much pain. I mean, the answer. So much pain. I, th I think the answer is Elijah Mitchell. I In my rankings, I have Saquon Barkley just behind Elijah Mitchell and Tyson Williams. Um, I, I don't that know. That sentence. I know. It's crazy. Um, I don't know that you can trust. Uh, Saquon Barkley yet there will be a time this season that he, you know he gets back to the full workload he only had 10 rushing attempts uh, I believe in week one however his expectation of fantasy points for the attempts he got versus what he did was very negative he was not good with the attempts he got so it was kind of a double whammy I think if you have an option to take the weight on Saquon you would do that, and Elijah Mitchell fits that bill. If As you, an option. Yeah, if you drop the Hagar to pick this guy up, and you've got uh, you know, Saquon Barkley who um, barely scored. It's not Washington scored. this week. On Thursday, great defensive front. Right. Yeah. You want to start your week with that. Yeah. No, but, no I don't. All right, let, it's well, still let's, hard to do emotionally. Let's play the game real quick. Oh, oh no. Saquon Barkley or James Robinson against the Denver Broncos? Oh, I'll go Saquon. I have Saquon ahead. Okay, Josh Jacobs against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I'll take Jacobs. Jay? Oh, <laughs> man. I, I, well, I, I want I, news I have, on him, though. That's tough because you won't get all the practice of reports the foot, the on toe. the toe. That, yeah. that is a risk, I guess. He still was dealing with that injury last game and, and had two touchdowns. I, I have Saquon ahead of Josh Jacobs in my rankings, and I'm, I'm now thinking I should flip that. Okay. Is that the end of the game? Yeah, that, <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't want right. to. I don't want to break people's hearts even more uh, with the drafting of Saquon Barkley. Before we move further and further into this gigantic mailbag, yeah, so big. I'd like to thank today's sponsors, <laughs> DraftKings. It's good to see the teams back out there, and lucky for us, that was just Week One. So much more football. That's why you got to get in on DraftKings right now. The official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. They're putting you in the center of the action. And new customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit by signing up using the code BALLERS. DraftKings is very simple. You just pick your lineup, you stay under the salary cap, and you're done. And you enjoy the weekend. You get to, you get to celebrate. You get to tilt. You get, you get further in on the action. You feel it like never before with that free shot at millions in total prizes. This is how you get in. Download the DraftKings app now. Use the code BALLERS. 
This week, new customers get the free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Enter the code BALLERS to get a free shot at millions in total of prizes with that first deposit. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. We also want to thank good friends of the show, Mac Weldon. Woo! Look, you're, you're a busy guy out there. Stop thinking about what to wear. Just embrace the radically efficient Mac Weldon daily wear system. Uh, I'm a Mac Weldon guy. Yes, I have indeed. I have more Mac Weldon pairs of underwear than is socially appropriate. I, I'm going for 365. <laughs> uh, I'm not there yet, but I some day if you dream big enough. Uh, I have a ton of their sweat shorts too. They are the most comfortable. They fit well. They wear well. Like I've had them for years, and they look the same. I love Mack Weldon products. They have breathable T-shirts and polos and button-ups and shorts and underwear, which I have so many of, and beyond, Mike, beyond those things. You can check it all out. Um, they have Ace sweat shorts, like I said. Those are the ones I wear. Uh, buy some time this summer with the Mack Weldon Daily Wear System. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash footballers and enter the promo code footballers. That's MacWeldon.com slash footballers. Promo code footballers for 20% off Mac Weldon, radically efficient wardrobing. They will not put the clothes on for you. You have to do that yourself. That is the only part of it that is a real bummer for me. It's, yeah, that's pretty lame. A, that's a bummer. Okay. Um, <laughs> Twitter question from um, Sensei says, what are the benefits of dropping someone on your roster pre-waiver pickup compared to dropping that player while you're adding a player Ooh. in the same transaction? This is a really good strategy question that um, maybe we should have had on yesterday's waiver episode while you were setting your lineup. But for future weeks, <laughs> better late than never. In today. Yeah, uh, the, the for future weeks, the way that I view it, and tell me if you guys view this any differently. I will. The really intricate uh, ability to make a bunch of different waiver moves that uh, would essentially be a tree of thought where you, you're going to want this guy if you get that guy, but not if you you know miss out on that guy. You don't want to drop, you don't want to pre-drop your players in that situation. You have more ability to set uh, specific transactions. By not dropping them early. By not dropping 100%. them early and building your waivers off of the drops. Now, now, in, can I give an example of that just yeah, please. To, to make it clear? So let, let's say I was going in on a running back, and I'm going to drop. I could drop Marquez Callaway, and I could do it right now and then just build out that, or I could do it condition, you know, on signing of the player. Well, because I only want maybe one running back to add to my roster, I would make all my running back claims all with the condition of dropping Callaway. Yep. Therefore, only one can process because that player's connected to it. Whereas if I dropped a bunch of guys off my bench and put those save and waiver claims in, I could end up with three running backs. Exactly. And and so, but it's much easier to pre-drop. Um, and so if I don't have a situation well, sometimes where... Sometimes it feels good. It's, it's just, look, I'm in a lot of leagues. Um, oh, not, we're one minute away. When, when, when you're in four or five leagues, sometimes it's easier to just pre-drop your players and then make a huge list of uh, waiver priorities. And I do that when, you know, if I'm just going after a bunch of different wide receivers and, the you know, it's all the same position, uh, I'll, I'll pre-drop the players. <laughs> we, are, we are one minute from finding out how much I overpaid by this is oh wow this is this is interesting because when we came into the studio this morning walked it through the door it was literally like we walked in the door and went <gasps> and just <laughs> held our breath <laughs> until about 30 seconds from now the, we are in it we are in it with you guys this is not you know us up in an iron tower uh, iron <laughs> tower wow i mean like we're not fancy we're hardcore so wait we're still in it we, we could be in a tower but it wouldn't be ivory no no it'd be is, iron is iron greater than ivory no it's just no, more hardcore no. <laughs> it's, it's not great more steampunk right exactly. is marble a bit above ivory like Ooh, if it was a marble great, tower that's a great question probably not because you right. got to take the ivory off the elephants. See, see Jason, stop talking because he's trying to refresh the page. All right, go to the next voicemail. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Here we go. What's up, ballers? Just want to know if Michael Pittman Jr. is a stash or trash candidate after week one. Great question. Yeah. And I'll jump in. <laughs> and 100% he is still a stash to me. He ran the most routes of the Indianapolis wide receivers. 
I am trying to not play him. Uh, Andy's making a face. So we'll get to the waiver wire report. <clears throat> I'm guessing he got him by like one or two. Uh, but Michael Pittman, I think he is still the wide receiver to have on the on your roster from the Indianapolis Colts. I don't, it, But something to monitor. It, I, we don't know if this was a game plan against the Seahawks or not. Naeem Hines accounted for 23% of the targets for Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor accounted for 20%. Of their targets. That's 43% of the targets went to the running back position for Indianapolis this week. Pittman is still a hold because yes. you got to give him more than one week. You know, every wide receiver is inconsistent. But what's, what sucks about Michael Pittman is he's playing the Los Angeles Rams. What I was saying is if you have an option, I'm trying to pivot away from him. You know, like in our double flex league, for example, I will likely be playing Jamal Williams this week over Michael Pittman. I wouldn't, yeah, I definitely wouldn't play him. I thought that if you're looking at dropping him, that's where you might want to hold another I don't week think or two. Should, I don't think you should drop but him. But I, I think Zach Pascal has just as good of a chance of being a contributor fantasy-wise. Let's, wait, move, wait, let's before, move forward. Wait, before you move sure? Forward, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> did you, you get forward. him? Okay, you got him. Well, and what did you do? Let's hear it. Oh, it couldn't be better. Oh, no, Jason. <laughs> Come I'm on. not. I'm not happy. All right, let's let's hear it, Andy. Uh, well, oh, I hit it again. Can you can you shut that down? No, you can't. I've oh, got to shut it down. We, it's a party. Was Al trying to shut it down? Is that what happened? Okay. Let's. I mean, I could dance the rest of the day. I didn't know. What Holy the, balls! <laughs> Whoa. Um, look, I I told I told you I'm I'm extremely desperate for a running back. Uh, apparently Jason wanted to ruin me on the show. I want to storm out of here right now. I want... Now, why would that be? Uh, because I really, really wanted Elijah Mitchell. I have a, We've got a double flex league, and while I've got two good running backs, I wanted a third, and my, my double flex really has a problem. So picking him up, I think... I said this. If it turns out to be last year's James Robinson, he's worth 100% of your fab. So you've got to make the choice. There are, there are easy paths for this to be a bad pickup, but I went hard in the paint, and part of the reason that I went hard in the paint, and I mean hard in the paint... Yeah, we'll reveal. Um is because, Andy, you are in division, division with yeah. me, and I know how desperately you need him. Uh, okay. My my co-manager and I, we we talked about this, and, and I went up from, I started the morning at 82. I started the morning. What? 80. And I went up to 86. And I went to 91, baby. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could just completely submarine me, but I had I had no choice. I had no choice in the matter. And I think the whole point about the backfield is you will get something out of Elijah Mitchell. You might not get what you hope. It might not be James Robinson, but I had no choice. I tried for three days to make trades for running backs. Naeem Hines was a target. Couldn't get Naeem Hines. Miles Gaskin was a target. I would be buying semi-low on Miles Gaskin. He was still a double-digit player in week one, but it was a difficult Patriots matchup. I would be buying low on Miles. Um but yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm happy. And in yesterday when I put in at 80, when I asked my co-manager, it was kind of like, well, if someone beats us, are we going to be mad? And it was like, yeah, we got to go hard in the paint. So I didn't know it'd be you, Jason. I had no idea it'd be me and you. I All right. You're still I, tilting. I, I, am, I am very tilted. But let's have a great show. That's the <laughs> eyes of a sad man. You see what you did to him, Andy? No, oh, this is such, it's so great that we record right during this time every single week. Next. Temperature check, Robert Woods. That's a question coming in from Instagram. Chris okay. Eckers, uh, the Rams, obviously 20 for 26 for Matthew Stafford, highest pass rating of his career ever in his first game for the Rams. Uh, you had nine targets for Cooper Cup. You had three for Van Jefferson, four for Robert Woods. Cup was the man. My temperature check on Robert Woods, to quickly answer this, is he's totally fine. I mean, Robert Woods is going to be heavily involved. If it wasn't a single-game sample size, you know, you can pick one game out last year and decide it was a Robert Woods game or a Cooper Cup game. They're going to use both players. I would be holding just like I drafted him. Yeah, I'm at a solid 98.6 degrees. I am the normal human body temperature. Whatever you drafted him to be, I still think he's very involved. I will say this. Had a nice touchdown. Oh, my I, goodness. I do have a fever for Cooper Cup. 
but it does sure. not it does not mean that it comes at the expense of Robert Woods. I think Robert Woods and you know whatever we believe in the Rams offense with Matthew Stafford, which I believe in neutral game scripts is going to be very pass heavy um and I think it's going to succeed. So those things might benefit Cooper Cup more if he is indeed the full season target leader, but I I also think those things benefit Woods. And just a reminder, the the Rams opened the game with a what was that an 80 yard Touch whatever it was to Van Jefferson. To Van Jefferson, no more targets. That and that drive. means that there's no more targets during that drive. That means the Rams have already scored seven points. So that's a huge. That's an unfortunate opportunity that is taken away from both Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. And my note for for Robert Woods would be, bro, you got to get in on all these breakfasts. Oh the, yeah, get in there early. Make you need key. to get there five minutes before Cooper bring, Cup. Bring Open it. the door for Stafford. Have his have his tray ready. Bake a quiche, bring it Ooh, in. Yeah, you know what a I mean. A nice like, quiche, a nice quiche, because that's not that's not the go to. That's not the norm. Cooper you know. Cup is showing up with oatmeal. You guys oh. like quiches? Oh no, they're oh. disgusting. I Come think on. they're awful. You don't like a good quiche? No. Oh they're, man, they're always Al. Not for me. Pro okay, anti quiche. Uh, Brooksy. What? All right. All right. All right oh, is man. where I'd put it. I'm not yeah. like Brooks it's is pro quiche. <laughs> the difference. <laughs> well done. If my choice is no breakfast or quiche, I'll go quiche. Otherwise, I'll choose anything else. Give me a bowl oh, of cereal. I, I love a quiche. Really? Yeah. So what's in, what's in a good quiche for egg. you? Eggs. That's it. It's like just a. Would you like an egg pie, please? It's, the, it's such a weird texture. Yeah, yeah I'd rather just have scrambled eggs. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But it, <laughs> but do you want it shaped like a cake? Call it a quiche. Yeah, I can pick it up. It's mm. portable. It's yeah. normally got some burnt edges and stuff too. Yeah, it's a little, a little different. A little crispy texture. All right. You can't pick up scramby eggs with your hands. Scr like a savage. Scramby <laughs> eggs? Mike is pro quiche. <laughs> and he likes eating breakfast with his hands. That's what we learned. All right. Brandon Lee writes in on YouTube. Has the outlook on Michael Thomas changed since Jameis looks good at quarterback? And what week Ooh. would you try to acquire him in a trade? Um, this is a good question because obviously you need to act – but Michael Thomas is not back for a little while, and I still feel like I want like a, I don't know, two game sample size yes. of Jameis Winston to understand what to do with him. I'm not changing the outlook for Thomas off of one week. Jameis looked incredibly efficient, but this was also a uh, run and defense led offense here. Maybe that's because of the efficiency of Jameis Winston. So, but that's not factoring into the uh, the the trade value of Michael Thomas to me. The question becomes, I will, uh, Jason, I'll throw this to you, because the price for Michael Thomas, every single week it goes up slightly. So uh, if, if, for instance, I didn't have Michael Thomas in the league of record, what week would you try to trade for him? Uh, I, I think this is your best week to do it, it but it's totally team dependent because, like you said, the team that drafted Michael Thomas, they were well let's, aware. Let's say you, you have five bench spots and no IR. Okay, so if you have five bench spots, no IR, this is a, a very team dependent. If you if your starters look strong, um, and you, you're you're set up for success, um, then I would make that trade offer and try to get it because I think he will be good. But what what I'm uh, the reality is the 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 teammate the the league manager who drafted Michael Thomas, they did it knowing they were going to have to wait. They were prepared for that, so it's really taking advantage of. Look at that team and see if they have problems. If they have problems and they need starters and they're going to need to play the waiver wire and now they have the regrets, this is the week to do it because every week that goes on, they're closer to getting him back. So I think you've got to you've got to jump now if you want. But I don't. I this is not me saying you should go out and jump and try to trade for Michael Thomas because of Jameis Winston at all. My outlook on him has not changed one iota. Twitter question from Cam Edgecomb says, uh, what are some strategies you can use to increase the number of trades people make in your league? I will say this. Sleeper does a really good job with their trade block. That is a feature I have always thought was awful because you can do it on all the other platforms and no one sees it. On Sleeper, you put a guy in the trade block. I had three trade offers for him in less than 10 minutes because wherever they, where they put it on the platform – People see a, a, a face pop up and they know, hey, I'm going to go make an offer. But that is a way of saying, communicating 
yeah. about the teams in general is how you get more offers. Yeah, you can also include other things to throw into trades. Obviously, a lot of our trades in our league of record include draft picks in future years because we're a keeper league. Um, you can turn on fab budget trading to incentivize a trade. You know, you can uh, uh, I'll, I'll trade this player plus 10 extra fab to sweeten the deal to push a trade over the top. Um, I know I am pro fab trading. Uh, we have not. We do not have that in our league of record. We've voted on that several times. Um, but if if that's your goal, then you know if your goal is more trades, that's one way to do it. And it's it, this is a league culture that uh, like uh, in our our league of record, there's heavy trading. It's happening usually uh, at least once a week. And then I've had my other leagues where I the, I knew one point of contact in that league and he was like one of my best friends but I didn't personally know anybody else in the league I had no other way to communicate with these people besides sending them up an offer inside of the system I would often have to text my friend and be like dude can I get this person's number so I can actually try and communicate with them but that's that's where the culture has to be built it has to be built on a foundation of of communication and the desire to want to win, not just because there's a lot of money you can win, but win because you want to humiliate these other people who have now become your friends. So that it takes time to build that up. But having a central communication hub, I think, is the most important thing to try and get this kick started, which Sleeper does provide that as well. How you feeling, Jay? I'm uh... <laughs> I'm going to push through, I'm going to power through, I'm going to finish this now the quote, episode. In our production Slack channel, you said, all joy has been sucked out of my face. Yeah, I feel like it went straight out the front of my face, I can, um, here, like Dementor about, style. Okay. But on the other hand, you do have 86 fab that you thought you were not going to have. That is true, and I would have happily spent that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, would you I, have gone 92? So the problem is I was already down to 93. I probably would not have. So I just okay. have to deal with this. And and in our in the listener league that we are all in, Andy and I also went hard in the paint. I did an $82 bid there. He only did 45. So I I, I got him there and I still don't feel as good cuz I wasted a lot more fab. My my bid made you feel spectacular. Oh, it, that I was fully expecting this show to go a certain way. I would get him for 91. The next highest bid would be a, a Hagar of 55. You would mock me. Both of you would mock me for the rest of the show. That is the expectation. So to beat my division mate by five, it feels great. Uh, oh, I get it. You I, stole that joy from me, Jason. Yeah, sorry, sorry, man. I, 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 I see Andy. I'm, I'm laying on the ground and I'm looking <laughs> up, and about six feet ahead of me, uh, on the ground is Andy pouring, just shoveling, just shoveling <laughs> dirt right on top. It's a great visual. Um, yeah, I'm happy. That's where I am. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, are you expecting a bounce back from Ryan Tannehill? He, um, yes. Jason Morris writes in, plays Seattle in week two, only had two play action passes. They barely ran play action. My thought is they barely ran play action because handing the ball off to Derrick Henry resulted in uh, no yeah, yards. But the the question is, is the lack of play action because Arthur Smith is out of town, who was the king of, of calling in the play action last year. I think it was over 30% of their passing attempts last year were were on play action, and it works. Like, I don't think that's why. Because uh, Mike yeah. Vrabel wouldn't let that happen. Right. I, I agree. I mean, this isn't Cardinal homerdom. None of us thought they would even win the game, but the reality of what happened in week one was that the defensive line of the Arizona Cardinals, led by J.J. Watt and – Chandler Jones, and really that's not fair to put it in that order since Chandler Jones dominated, was completely outclassing the offensive line of the Titans. And so this is one of those things where I do have a slight bit of worry about Ryan Tannehill bouncing back and whether or not you know this that they are going to have problems based on how horrific it was week one. But I do think watching the game, I, I chalk it mostly up to the specific defenders on the Arizona Cardinals no defensive line. No time for play action. Yeah, I mean, you can't turn your back to an uh, to a defensive line that is coming straight through. You turn your back. I mean, when you they did that, they Taylor fumbled Lewan. the ball. You see Taylor Lewan issued a public apology for his play at left tackle? He he. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> He's just like, he had to come out and make a statement yeah. about what happened on Sunday. I mean, uh, I, 
Chandler I don't Jones know if, is going to push that sack record the way he played in week one. Yeah, by week three. <laughs> I saw that uh, DraftKings had the the prop at four more sacks, I think. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. For Chandler Jones. That's that's a good prop to bet the under. I mean, that's a season-long sack total for a half-decent yes. defender. Uh, all right, uh, two quick Dolphins questions. Instagram from Harrison Mike says, thoughts on the Dolphins offense? Uh. The matchup was tough against the Patriots defense, but I thought they okay. But a little, I guess I would say a little bit disappointing, honestly, for what you were uh, hoping for with the the second year for Tua with the skilled players around. And maybe maybe we we see another bump to that with Will Fuller coming back, adding some more speed to the to that offense. But it, it lukewarm. Just meh again, unfortunately, for me. Yeah, yeah. tough matchup week one. Will Fuller. Waddle coming. looked good. Yeah, Waddle looked great. And um Devontae you know, Parker looked And they won the game. Fine. I mean, they they yeah. they won the game against New England. I think Devon that's a, that's the problem. Devontae Parker looked good. It was a defensive slog of a game. And Will Fuller comes back, and that's our next question is would you start him right away against the Bills or wait? I can tell you what I'm gonna do in my dynasty league where I have Will Fuller. Because I'm going to play Tyson Williams and Marvin Jones, and I'm going to wait. Okay, so that's so that's deep options. So I, 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 I would I, recommend waiting as well. I, I'm i probably uh, in the middle in the sense that I would rather wait, but I would play Will Fuller ahead of Marvin Jones. Uh, that's okay. kind of the breaking point for me. All right, uh, Jason, this question is for you from Brendan. What is Hollywood Brown's outlook for the rest of the season? He looked great on Monday night he did. with that number five. Uh, has Kansas City, Detroit, Denver, Indianapolis coming up? Yeah, I mean, uh, look, this was a player I absolutely loved. We we uh, saw a lot of metrics that t talked about the breakout for him last year. This is why he was my my guy last year. And then he super disappointed in the first half of uh, his sophomore season and then was pretty good in the last six weeks of last year and starts off strong this year. I think the lesson that we learned last year was that you cannot trust a wide receiver when there is such little passing volume. He is a spot start, someone you could throw in your flex, someone that we know can get touchdowns. He's been, uh, you know, he got six touchdowns in the last six games of last year. Um, and so I, I think he is a fine, flex-worthy starter. I don't know that he'll ever, on this offense, be able to be just a weekly plug-and-play, um, depending, you know, a guy that you can just – regularly depend on if there's one to do it with it's him Watkins looked good too um but you're gonna have ups and downs and Mark Andrews was not involved I mean that was I think another part of this offense on this night where Mark Andrews had nothing I mean I I needed seven points to win in our family league for Mark Andrews mm -hmm. against my yeah devilish son and he won and then boy yeah you didn't get you didn't get halfway there no no <laughs> Thursday Night Breakdown. Look, we've had better Thursday night matchups on paper. <laughs> this game's going to stink. Uh, the New York football giants taking on the Washington football team in Washington. DraftKings Sportsbook line is Washington minus three. The over-under is 40 and a half. That should tell you everything you need to know that is the lowest over under on the week by two points last year there were very few games that were this low um and they they split um the the over under four to four and the average total score was 39 points this is two great defenses or at least very good defenses against two pretty bad offenses i don't want players in this game if it can be avoided even. well that, that makes it easy yeah i mean it, this this oh, is close easy up the show me. yep done R wrap it up i want to so get which out of here. kenny g are we expecting oh pff, i mean kenny g the routes are so <laughs> not yes that's the one. <laughs> yeah i mean i wouldn't be chasing sterling shepherds week one you could have ingram back out there the offensive line for the new york giants 31st in week one, according to the adjusted line yards from Football Outsiders. The defensive line for the Washington football team is very good. Daniel Jones, prime time, Chase Young coming after him. Are you uh, are you ready for the 4-0 and against Washington lifetime Daniel Jones? To That's an incredible stat. To take it to him? Uh, maybe. 
Uh, we'll see how Taylor Heineke can perform. I do think I the mean, Giants win the game. <laughs> me, the I kind of think so too. Yeah. Uh, the I'm I guess I'm kind of with Jason here. Antonio Gibson, look, he's in your lineup. This is an adjust expectations. Uh, he averaged three point three yards per carry against the Giants last year, and the Giants at least one week into the season, they're back at it. Yes, they gave up the Melvin Gordon seventy yard touchdown, but had that not have had had Gordon not caught the edge on that particular play, he would have been like ten for thirty. And Javante Williams was like three and a half yards of carry as well. So that the ground game for Denver or Denver against this Giants front line, they wasn't could, good. They could not get it going. Uh so ten, ten points for Gibson is my expectation. Yeah, just, you're gonna have enough volume. Maybe you get five dump off passes that don't break for big that's, yards. That's where the hope is that uh it, we mentioned that Gibson was the receiving leader. J.D. McKissick, Mr. Smooches himself, only Zero. S- he saw one target. Oh, did he get a yeah. target? He saw one target. He did not catch it. Well, he's credited. <laughs> yeah, I was preparing for it. Uh, yes, he's at least credited with a target. I don't recall when, when it came in there. Gibson was the featured running back, so hopefully he can get three to four receptions here so you can get a safer uh, floor. Uh, forward. McLaurin adjusted expectations too, or, or I mean, you, yeah. you drafted him. You have to play him in this game, and I'm assuming you're playing Logan Thomas just on the basis that he's your starting tight end, and you're not going to bench him against the Giants. Yeah, I mean, those three are probably begrudgingly in your lineup. Um, I don't have giant expectations. Oh, uh, is that a, is pun, that a pun? Not intended. Would you play? Okay, here was a quick pivot option because he was widely available on the waiver wire. Jared Kuk will be taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Yes, I would definitely play Jared Kuk. Okay. But the problem with that, saying you'd play him, is I'm not sure that I would drop Logan Thomas for Kuk. <laughs> and if you have Logan Thomas, do you really want to roster both Logan no. Thomas and Jared Kuk? So you might be stuck playing Logan Thomas. Yeah, I, I don't. I think Thomas is fine. That was one area, at least, you know. The touchdown pass did come Noah Fant from had, Taylor yeah. Heineke. No, Noah Fant had uh, ten or nine and a half, ten fantasy points in week one. The way you have to beat the the Giants is you got to go through the air. So so yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Cross kinda. your fingers and hope, but um, but don't expect a lot. Yeah, I mean, Galladay is one of those like, is he still a flex option for you, Mike, or is this? Yes, because okay. he's six targets. They I mean they were coming down the field. Is it worth so, adding so Evan Ingram? Because he might be coming back. I mean, he's probably on waiver wires. I don't think so. I, I'm not going to hold. When when he's back, I'm willing to pick him up and stash him that week because I don't know that I'm going to pick him up and play him the week he's back. I don't think Evan Ingram is good enough to be a guy you're holding multiple weeks. Um, so, no. All right. You can uh, – one final reminder here. Follow the show on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers, Twitter at the FF Ballers and the community – the magnificent community is over at jointhefoot.com. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you so much for tuning in, for supporting yeah. us. We can feel it, and we appreciate it. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.